quick properties is represented by QP on the status bar. It's this one here, QP. So if I switch that on, what will happen now is every time I select an object like this line, the quick properties panel comes up. It's just here. I can just drag that down a bit so you can see it. There we are. Now, the nice thing about the quick properties panel is it gives you all the properties. You can edit the properties. So, for example, I can click there. I can change that layer to, say, the external layer, and it'll change on the drawing like so. It's great, but sometimes it can be annoying. It just pops up and you might not want to see it when you're working on a busy drawing. So you can just close it again like so. But if you leave it switched on here, as soon as you click on any object, that quick properties comes up. So you have to go over here and close it again. I'll just hit escape there to deselect those two lines. Now, quick properties does have some settings. So if I now right click on QP and go to settings on the shortcut menu, Again, we're on the Drafting Settings dialog box, but we're in the Quick Properties tab at the top. As you can see, display the Quick Properties palette on selection when it's switched on. That's for all objects. What we can do is change the palette location. It can be cursor dependent in the top right quadrant, and it's 50 pixels away from what you select. If I change that to top left and OK that now, and what I'll do, I'll go and select the same line with QP on and watch what happens. Can you see it goes to the left hand side, 50 pixels away from the cursor where I clicked on that line. So what you can do is change the settings of when and where it appears. So if I right click again and go to settings again, I'll change that back to top right, which is what I prefer. We can also collapse the palette automatically and change the minimum number of rows, let's say to four, and I'll OK that. Now what will happen now is when I select an object, in this case, there are only four settings that I need to look at. But on other objects, there might be more, like a hatch, for example. So if I hit Escape and hover my solid fill there when it goes grainy, just click. And you can see there, again, it's only showing the four, but when I hover over it, you can see it expands out to all of the settings of that particular hatch or solid fill. It's called a solid fill because the actual layer is fill and you're using a solid pattern. So it is actually a hatch, but it's called solid fill. Again, I can close that there. What you'll also notice as well, I can go to options there for the settings and here, I can customize the quick properties if I want to there as well by clicking on that button there. I'm just going to close that now and I'm going to switch off quick properties and I'm going to hit escape to deselect my hatch or my solid fill. So you can see that quick properties is useful. Again, it follows the cursor around, which is fine, but it can be really annoying on a busy drawing. If you've got lots of objects and you select an object and it's covering something else up that you need to see, it's one of those ones that you either love it or hate it. Personally, I don't tend to use it. Other people I know use it religiously. Just use it, try it, see how you get on with it. If you don't like it, all you've got to do is go down to the status bar here and switch it off. It's that easy. The next drafting setting we're going to look at on the status bar is SC, Selection Cycling. So if I click on that and switch it on, what will happen at the moment is if I hover over that object there, which is a rectangle, you'll notice nothing happens. It just highlights in the normal way. That's because there's only one rectangle there drawn in the drawing. There's nothing drawn on top of it. There's nothing sort of over the top of it, if you see what I mean. Now, the reason that I say that is if I drew another exact same shaped rectangle, but on a different layer, you wouldn't know that there was another rectangle underneath. So let me turn selection cycling off. And what I'll do, we're on the internal layer now. I'll go to the rectangle command here on the draw panel. And I'll click that corner there using object snaps. Notice that's why I've got object snaps on all the time. And I'll just drag upwards to there and click again. And I've got a red rectangle. But I don't know that the blue rectangle is underneath. How do I check that? I could very easily just click there. And if I delete that by pressing the delete key, it's like, oh, hello, there's another rectangle underneath. I'll just undo that because I want both rectangles there. You'll sometimes get third party drawings and what you'll find is there's objects on top of each other and you don't know they're there. 
So selection cycling allows you to work out what is there. It's not a perfect tool, but it's very handy when you've got objects on top of each other like this. So I'll switch selection cycling on. Hover now, and you'll notice when I hover, look, see that little blue symbol by the crosshair? It's telling me that there is more than one object there. So when I click on that polyline now, I get the option, ah, there's two polylines there, different colors. And I can go to the selection list and select the one that I want to select. So if I now select the blue one, what happens now is it selected the blue one and not the red one. So if I press delete now, it will delete the blue one and the red one is left behind. If I go back and undo that again, you'll notice now the red one is still there and also the blue one is still there. But I've got selection cycling on. So if I hover, there's my little blue symbol again. I click. This time I might select the red one. If I delete the red one by pressing the delete key, you can see there that obviously there are two rectangles and the blue one was underneath. So I'll undo that again. And selection cycling, every time it gives you that little blue symbol. So I'll click there. I'm going to select the blue one. And I'm going to hit the delete key and delete the blue one. Now, with selection cycling on, if I hover, you'll notice there's no symbol because there's nothing underneath that red rectangle. If I right click on SC here, there are settings that can be set. So you'll notice not much, but they're useful. Allow selection cycling, obviously. Display selection cycling list box. Yes, you always want that to display. You want it to be cursor dependent as well, so it's close to the object you've selected. And in this case, the distance in pixels is 25, whereas the quick properties was 50. But that's because it's a bigger box on the screen. It takes up more space. The selection cycling is much smaller. And you want to show the title bar of the selection cycling so that you know what it is that's popping up on the screen. Later on, you might want to turn that off. I'll OK that. All those settings are fine. And the good thing about selection cycling, again, if you don't need it, you can just hit the SC on the status bar like that and switch it off. So that's selection cycling for you. Very useful on third party drawings where you might have objects on top of each other. Last but not least on the status bar is the AM button here, annotation monitor. Now, if I switch that on, you'll notice nothing actually happens in the drawing. What it does is it's monitoring your annotation, things like dimensions and text. I'll just switch it off again for the moment. Now, this dimension here obviously represents this edge on the right of the rectangle there. If I delete the rectangle, so I'll select it, hit the delete key, it's gone. But the dimension stays there. That dimension is now orphaned. It's got nothing to dimension against. I'll just undo that now. If I do that again, but with the annotation monitor on, watch what happens. I'll delete that now like that, select it, delete it. And as soon as I delete it now, both dimensions are going, hang on a minute, we're missing something here. So what you get is that little exclamation mark there. And I can click on that there and I can reassociate if I want to, or I can delete that dimension. What I'm going to do is hit escape and escape again. And I'm going to go back to the undo up here on the quick access toolbar and bring that back. You'll notice the exclamation marks disappear as soon as that object comes back. Let's try something slightly different. This dimension I want to stay and I want that rectangle there to stay. I've got the annotation monitor on down here at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to delete this line here and this line here. When I delete them, you'll notice that my 10607 dimension has got the exclamation mark, indicating that it's missing something. It's orphaned because I deleted those two lines. So if I go now to the exclamation mark and I click on it and I reassociate, that then allows me to reassociate the first extension line origin. I'm going to go there and then I'm going to reassociate there as the second extension line origin and it updates the dimension to the new size that I've specified by reassociating it. The good thing is the annotation monitor showed me that that dimension needed to be reassociated anyway because the original lines that obviously it was dimensioning had disappeared. Let's just right click on annotation monitor there. You'll notice there are no settings. There's display, 
Display is just display. You can switch any of those buttons on or off. They display on the status bar. You can switch them on and off. That's the same for every single drafting setting. Use icons we know about already. We've covered that previously. So there are no settings to worry about with the annotation monitor. All there is there is an on and an off. So I'm going to switch that off again now and just leave the four drafting settings that I always use, which are Polar, O-Snap, O-Track and Dynamic. I leave those on all the time whenever I'm drawing in AutoCAD or AutoCAD Electrical. The Isolate command, whilst not on the drafting settings on the status bar, is still a setting on the screen that you can use to your advantage. What's really nice about Isolate is you can isolate existing objects on a drawing to make your life easier to see the objects that you need to see to work on your drawing. So let's have a look at that now. Let's say that that dimension there, the 10607 dimension, needs to be isolated so that I can work on that information there. So I'll click on it, I'll right click, and on the shortcut menu I've got Isolate right there. So I can isolate that object or I can hide it. In this case, I want to hide it. And that literally hides it on the drawing. It hasn't been deleted. All I've done is hide it. I can just right click anywhere now, go back to isolate, end the object isolation, and it comes back. So I can hide objects, but I can also isolate objects that I want to work on. So I could select this rectangle here. Again, Right click, isolate is there, I'll isolate that object this time, and it isolates that one particular object, hiding everything else. It's the reverse of the hide option, if you see what I mean. So it's isolating and hiding everything else. Again, I can just right click, go to isolate, and end the object isolation, and everything comes back. This isolate tool is excellent, because what you can do is you can select multiple objects. So if I want to work on that rectangle, and that rectangle there, I can right click, isolate and isolate those two objects. Everything else isn't getting in the way. That's the best thing. I can work on those, change those, edit those, right click again, isolate and end the object isolation and they come back. I can also hide multiple objects as well. So if I select the three dimensions this time, right click, isolate and hide the objects, they're gone. And that's the equivalent of isolating anyway, because I can work on the rectangles again. I can then right click, isolate, and end the object isolation. It's a very useful little tool. It's not on the drafting settings on the status bar. It's on the right hand shortcut menu on your mouse. But the nice thing about it is, is it makes your life easier, makes you more productive, and it will help you in electrical drawings by isolating the objects that you need to work on and hiding the objects that you don't need to see so that there's more clarity in your drawing and it makes life easier for you to work.